Hello, everybody. <clears throat> All at once. This is Theo Cedar Jones on October 4th, 2015. And I think it was, this would be a good time for me to weigh in on the issue of gun violence. Does anyone in the world have a, an actual solution to gun violence in America? I mean, I hear a few things about <clears throat> we need gun control. Even if we had all the gun control that gun control advocates want, would that be enough? Would it make an, a significant difference in the amount of murders in America? And I don't think any of the plans I've seen are enough. But I have a plan uh, to reduce gun violence in the United States. <clears throat> but it's the not easy plan. <laughs> Um, there was a commentator who mentioned that Australia had a mass shooting. The government decided to put some kind of severe limits on guns and they haven't had a mass shooting since. And why can't America just be more like Australia? And so the case I'm going to make is that America's exceptionalism extends to violence. And America's legacy and infrastructure and policies of violence <clears throat> are so big that they skew the gun violence issue. They affect the gun violence issue because <clears throat> if you take the idea that whoever's at the top sets the tone for everybody else, the US government sets the tone in terms of violence. <clears throat> and this is part of what propels gun violence is that our own government is the most violent, um, homicidal force in the world. And so I'm going to make a case that in order to have a long-term real influence on gun violence, we would have to address the deep-seated issues of violence in America altogether. And this can be done. But we need to know what we're looking at. And so, for example, Barack Obama is in a position where he really has no moral authority to speak on the issue of gun violence. Because he himself is commander-in-chief of the armed forces of the United States, <clears throat> which means <clears throat> he's got the biggest nuclear weapons arsenal at his disposal in the world. He's got more military bases in the Middle East than any other country. And he's got more military bases around the world than any other country. And he signs off on drone strikes which have killed over 2,000 people without due process or a fair trial. So he is a mass murderer himself. He signs off on those drone strikes personally. If he didn't sign off on them, they wouldn't have happened. Or maybe the CIA couldn't do them without his approval. But <clears throat> you really can't speak with moral authority about violence when you yourself are the top violent actor in the world. When you've got the biggest nuclear arsenal, when you do the most drone strikes without due process, and when you have the most military bases in the world. So the and it gets worse, of course. America, why is America the most violent actor in the world? If you take the fact that we have the most military bases in the Middle East, that we have shown in the past a propensity to uh, <clears throat> escalate violence in the Middle East, to pursue our interests in fossil fuels in the Middle East, that America has more of the elements that would contribute to World War III than any other country. Military bases in the Middle East, biggest nuclear weapons arsenal, recklessly, illegally doing drone strikes and extrajudicial assassinations by the thousand, thousands, These are the deep issues of violence 
because as many people as are killed by gun violence in the United States and have been killed over the years, that's still a small fraction of who would be killed in World War III if actions by the United States led to World War III. And I'm saying America is doing more of those types of actions than anyone else, except for henchmen of Israel and England, which are also contributing to <clears throat> profiteering from weapon sales all over the world, another force of destabilization and escalation, possession of nuclear weapons, and a negative history of escalation and destabilization and aggravation in the Middle East. So America's got all this karma in the Middle East and we are wondering why we have so many gun fatalities in the United States. Because America's exceptionalism extends to violence. America is exceptionally the most violent actor in world history and right now stands poised to do the most violent act of them all which is World War III in the Middle East, precipitated by America's actions. So that is to be avoided, <clears throat> and in avoiding that, we can also simultaneously address all the issues of violence comprehensively. And this is what I'm suggesting. You can't, I believe, because of American exceptionalism, you can't have an Australian solution for gun violence in the United States. Because we have a legacy a history, a pattern of exceptional violent action and behavior. And this is the time to finally root out and address all of America's violent actions and behaviors and comprehensively dial down, phase out nuclear weapons, military bases around the world. American military bases need to be closed. There's too many of them. There's too many in the world. And it is a forward provocation uh, towards World War III to have so many American military bases in the Middle East. And then there's also the official U.S. government cover-up of 9-11. How can we trust Barack Obama's moral authority on gun violence when he is covering up one of the most violent acts carried out by the U.S. government, namely 9-11. So he's dripping with violent legacies that make him the last person who has any moral authority to talk about gun violence. And America in general has very little authority to talk about violence until it reduces its own violence, until we implement a bullet tax, which is a core element of my plan. And here's why. I believe that prohibition of guns, handguns, personal armaments, will never work in America. That, And the reason is because we have a gun culture in America. And handguns, rifles, shotguns, even some automatic and automatic weapons. You're never going to get rid of them. And I wouldn't want to try. And the way to reduce the murders, one of the main ways to do it is to phase in the de development and use of nonviolent and, I mean, non lethal and less lethal bullets and ammunition for those guns and use the bullet tax to pay for the non-lethal, less lethal ammunition to be cheap and available to everyone. And of course, it would make lethal bullets extremely expensive and also give us the money to pay for all the downstream harms caused by gun violence, namely death, injury, lost productivity, and a atmosphere of terror. What price do you put on that? <clears throat> so the bullet tax basically is quite simple. It just says take all of the downstream harms 
caused by guns and bullets. Every single death caused by them, every single injury caused by them, every <clears throat> bit of lost productivity. And somehow also we have to give a, a financial number to the degradation and quality of life due to the atmosphere of terror caused by guns in the United States. And then you get a total number amount of all the money because every death has an actuarial value of some millions of dollars. All the injuries have a financial value. All the lost productivity has financial value. Add all that financial value up and divide it by the total number of bullets sold. And that's the tax that you put on each bullet. And then the taxes collected are used for <clears throat> the most effective, stringent, comprehensive gun safety education campaign the world has ever seen. Uh, gun accidents have to be stopped. Um, people should be trained and be required to be trained ex much more extensively before they are allowed to possess guns of any kind. And there should be a much more serious gun safety education culture in America. And the, and the bull tax would help pay for that. The bull tax would help pay for a number of other things, like gun buyback programs in every city. We're going to buy back every single gun that you're willing to sell us. We're not going to take your guns, but we are going to buy them back, and we are going to tax your bullets, and we are going to give you lots and lots of less lethal, non-lethal ammunition options. Uh, and encourage you and educate you out of your use of lethal bullets. This is the way it's going to get done. So we have to deal strategically with the reality of America's exceptionalism when it comes to violence. If we want to have a serious and effective response to gun violence. Namely, let's go for a numerical goal. Let's cut gun homicides in the United States by 90% in the next 25 years. And let's use harm reduction tactics, namely the bullet tax, to achieve that. And also an ambitious campaign to roll back the number of U.S. military bases in the world, roll back the number of U.S. nuclear weapons to zero, stop all extrajudicial assassinations and drone strikes, and tell the honest truth about 9-11 being an inside job. Then American recover its moral authority on issues of violence. Because you can't lead if you've got no moral authority on the issue you're trying to lead in. America can't lead its way out <clears throat> of gun homicides as an issue until we address comprehensively America's legacy of violence altogether.